How are we feeling today? <laughs> Bears fans, I gotta laugh because uh, otherwise I'm gonna cry. This is uh, this is bad. This is, uh, we saw this coming. We just were in denial. I, as in we, I was in denial. I I said it all offseason, guys. I was right on so many things about this offseason and this team. Down to players we should keep and let go of and the trade down and the drought in the hall. It's, things can turn around. They can. They can turn around. PFF grades, Bears versus Cardinals, the train wreck game that sent the season from this to this. It's hard to come back from this. As a team, the morale right now, there is turmoil in that locker room right now. You see other teams firing their head coaches after seven straight losses. I'm talking specifically of the Saints, Dennis Allen. You see t- teams firing their offensive coordinators, Luke Getze from the Raiders. Well-deserved. They should fire him. And then you see teams like the Bears problem is it's not just Matt Eberflus. Right now, social media, Bears Twitter, everyone is just putting it all on Eberflus. That guy on the right, <clears throat> right above me, he's just as much to blame. He has not made good decisions. He's lucked into a lot of stuff. The trade from one down to nine, getting DJ Moore, getting the haul from the Panthers. Stupid by the Panthers, but he lucked into it. He lucked into a situation, and then he ruined it the next year. He absolutely blew it by not taking advantage of the draft capital from number one down. I understand that the commanders may not have traded down from number two to number one. I understand that. But there were other teams willing to trade, and we should have done it. I'm not saying I hate Caleb Williams. not saying he's terrible. I think he'll be a fine quarterback. But I said it all offseason that this draft class has multiple quarterbacks that can be franchise quarterbacks. And there's no one player more important than the team. That's the catchphrase I had all offseason. From January to March, April, when this channel was growing the most, that's what I constantly said over and over and over. There's no one player more important than the team. Even if he's generational quarterback, Caleb Williams. Now I hope Caleb Williams continues to develop. I hope we have a franchise quarterback. But it's not just about him. It never was. That's why I said we should have picked up Xavier McKinney. Now, I like Kevin Byard. Fine. That was a fine one. But I said Xavier McKinney in the offseason. Xavier McKinney is having one heck of a season. I said Derrick Henry. Look what Derrick Henry's doing. And I said we could have got him for $7 million. Maybe it would have taken him 8 or 9 to get him to Chicago. Is Derrick Henry worth 8 or $9 million? Hmm. Let me think. I said we should go and get Connor Williams. And if not Connor Williams, Lloyd Cushenberry. And if not Lloyd Cushenberry, there were three or four centers we should have gotten. Now, I have defended Coleman Shelton. And I'm going to show you on here, Coleman Shelton is still worth defending. He's been a fine center. He's not a long-term center. And that's fine. We can draft one next year. But we could have had a lot more draft capital if we would have traded down from one. I get it. A lot of you right now are looking right now at this and saying, okay, we've heard this all before. It's frustrating. It's hard. What are we going to do? We can't change the past. They did what they did. Ryan Poles did what he did. I'm going to throw something out there right now. We can do more on this later. I'm not hearing anybody talk about it. Why not fire Ryan Poles right now? There is so much buzz about how good Ian Cunningham is. So many player personnel across the league, other teams in the anonymous uh, survey they did said Ian Cunningham is a up-and-comer who's going to be a leader and an absolute stud of a GM. In fact, they praised him more than they praised Ryan Poles. When you hear about him in the draft, he's the one who keeps Ryan Poles level-headed. Can we talk about this? I I get we get a comp pick if he goes. Is a comp pick more important than this team being led the right direction by the right person? Ryan Poles was part of Kansas City, so he must be amazing. Ryan Poles has made some bad shots. Need we remind us of Chase Claypool? And it's not just one. There's multiple. But he lucked into that number one overall pick, trade down for number nine, getting DJ Moore, a future first-round pick that turned into a first overall. That was lucky. Could have just as well been a a fifth overall pick. That wasn't something he did. That's something the Panthers sucked last year and continue to suck, so it looks better. But he's made some poor decisions. Keeping Matt Eberflus when you have a number one overall pick quarterback 
was a poor decision. I like Matt Eberflus for his defense. I think he's a great defensive coordinator. He clearly doesn't know how to manage games, and he doesn't know how to get players in position to have situational awareness in games to do what they need to do in games to execute. He talks about executing all the time. Then why aren't they? I, I was sold on your culture, Matt Eberflus. I was sold that let's build this culture where guys are all in. It's all about the team. Hits principle. Team first. Let's get it. We hold each other accountable. It's not happening, though. You can say one thing, but you're doing another thing. This team is not performing, and that's on you, 100% on you. And Ryan Poles, you kept him. That's on you. This offensive line, that's on you, Ryan Poles. You didn't build this offensive line when you knew you were picking a number one overall quarterback. Think about that. We knew we were picking a quarterback number one overall, and we didn't overhaul this line. We didn't trade down and pick up Zach Frazier, pick up additional pieces, and sign <laughs> assign proven players to come in and fix this team. We went ahead and rolled with it. We rolled with it. We we scrapped things together. And there's there's moments where it looks good. Matt Pryor has been heaven sent. Tevin Jenkins can't stay healthy for the life of him. And when he is, he's inconsistent. Darnell Wright does not look like a 10th overall pick. He doesn't. How much better would this team be with Joe Alt right now? Long term. Joe Alt. And maybe we had to pick up Bonix. I touted all offseason. Caleb is not any better than Jaden Daniels and Bo Nix. Look what's happening in the league right now. I hate to do the na 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 na. I'm right. And long term, I do think Caleb can be better. But it's never about one player. Not even the quarterback position. It's a team. Team wins games. I get that Tom Brady and Pat Mahomes make it look otherwise. But it's just not factual. Teams win as a team. All right, there's my rant. Let's get into the grades. Do the grades every week. Got to move me around here. All right, offensive studs of the game. And this is usually, just you, those who continue to watch the channel, this is usually 10 players long, offensive studs. Players who score 65 or above or right around there, you got five. You got five of them this game. Matt Pryor, 81.3. Probably the only good player of this game was Matt Pryor at right guard. And Coleman Shelton and Darnell Wright looked a little bit better because of him. Let's be honest. And then the left side of the line looked like absolute dog crap. Dog trash. He did. Romo Dunze had a 100-yard game. Looked really good. Honestly, looked really good. Don't know why DJ Moore and Keenan Allen looked like garbage. They did. DJ Moore running his routes. Looked lazy. Looked apathetic. Looked like he is depressed. Looked like he doesn't want to be a part of this team. Keenan Allen dropping that. I mean, right in his bread basket. Right in his hands. It's Keenan freaking Allen. You're supposed to be known for being the guy who is clutch on third and fourth down. Missed that. We got a punt. <laughs> then situational awareness at the end of the first half. 65-yard running touchdown. It's it's unbelievable. I, I'm, ugh, let's get this out of our system and move on. Turn the page. It, we're not turning the page, guys. There's got to be a complete shift and overhaul. And while other teams are making the changes to fire people and bring someone in and fix the problem, I do think Eric Washington would do a better, better job as a team leader right now than Matt Eberflus. I do. He was the assistant head coach in Buffalo. He's got experience. He could do it. He could, he could, he could make those tough decisions and actually lead a team. Firing Matt Eberflus wouldn't be the worst thing in the world. And I don't know. Maybe it's a crazy concept, but maybe you demote him and maybe he accepts it. I don't think he will, and I don't think that would work in the locker room. I just I don't think we can continue forward with him with the morale of this team right now. All right, so there's your offensive studs. There's five of them, and it's kind of funny to look at three offensive linemen on the studs list when they allowed six sacks, but I'll get to that, and it's pretty embarrassing because those who have followed this channel know I have said it since last season. We should have cut Larry Borm. There's no reason Larry Borm should be on this team. I get Kieran Amagaji is injured. I get Braxton Jones is injured. I get we're decimated. You could have picked up a bum off the street and put him at right tackle, left tackle, left tackle primarily where Larry Borm is, and he would have done a better job. I could have gone in there undersized, and I could have figured out a way to do better than Larry Borm did. All right, I'm a little extreme, but that's that's how bad Larry Borm is in the NFL. We could have picked someone else up. So I'm going to go straight to duds, and I'm going to point that out. 
Move me across over here. Offensive duds. Keenan Allen, 51.8. Bad drops. I mean, there were some bad, not there were some bad drops in this game. Jake Kierhan, a couple of snaps in there. Darnell Wright, for Darnell Wright, Darnell Wright. 50.3 grade. Cole Komet, non-existent in this game. Every, every bad. 50, 45 point. Larry Borum, 44.2. Woo, Larry, welcome to getting your free $3 million paycheck. Let's cut his butt today. Save the cap on that. I don't care if we don't have somebody else. Go trade for Sheriff right now from the Jaguars. Go trade for him. Go give up whatever. Give up a pick for him. Save this season. Save Caleb's development, because if he continues to get hammered with garbage players filling in, we're not going to have a quarterback developing properly. We'll have another Justin Fields on our hand who gets the yips, who takes too long to throw because he's afraid he's going to get his butt smacked every single play. It's bad. It's bad. I, I'm down right now. All right. Pass blocking. Let's look at this pass blocking and look right... Where is my boo, boo boo? Here we go. Where is my little bear down pointer? Here's my pointer. Hello, bear down. Matt Pryor, look at that. His pass blocking grade, 86.6. Coleman Shelton, 77.8. Hey, fellas, way to do your job. This guy right here, though, Larry Borum. Welcome to the team, Larry. Welcome back from your injury and your free $3 million. Enjoy the paycheck, brother. All right, right down here, look at this. Six sacks on the game. Three. Three by one player. Larry Borum. 20 pressures. Seven by Larry Borum. Seven pressures from your left tackle. The crux of your team. One of the most important positions to keeping your quarterback safe, protecting your quarterback, allowing the run and the pass game to get going through your left tackle. Larry Borum, welcome to your first game back. Three sacks allowed. Wow. Jake Curhan, three pressures allowed on 13 snaps. <whistles> okay. All right. Before I get too negative, let's move on to the run blocking. It's bad. I mean, look at that. This is what I'm looking at over here, guys, is these. Oops. Let me move me. Sacks, hits, hurries, pressures, total pressures right there. You can look at this grade, but when you look at the real, I mean, he just, oh. And this is the opportunities they had. How many plays they were in on? <sighs> Moving on to run blocking. Oh no! Here's the here's the pass block efficiency. Let's look at this. Let's move me over here. We were 18th before this game, guys. 18th. We're down to 23rd again, and we were 85. We're down to 82.9. This was this grade. We had a 74 grade in this game. 20 pressures allowed and six sacks. Woo! Looks very similar to years past, doesn't it? Hmm, maybe Justin Fields wasn't the problem. Maybe it wasn't all on Justin Fields, and you see that when he got to start in Pittsburgh. No, he's not a dynamic. He's not a top 10 passer. He was leading the team. He has good decision making. A little slow to process, but he did good with the line we had. He really did, and he proved every year. He said it. Now we're down to 23. I can't even include all the top 10. I can't fit them all on the screen because we're so Nike. Oh, the Bears down to 82.9. 82.9 pass grade, and I don't see it getting better anytime soon, especially with injuries. That was the biggest concern we had. If there were injuries that occurred, we would be in trouble. Here we are. So there we are, pass block efficiency. Moving on to the run blocking. Move me down here again. Here's our run blocking, and guess who's at the bottom of this list again? Boop, 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 32.4. Why'd the run game struggle? Well, look at all these guys. Matt Pryor, the only good one. Well, Coleman Shelton, too. Like I said, Matt Pryor, Coleman Shelton, that's it. Whoop, moving the wrong thing again. Sorry about that, guys. Matt Pryor, Coleman Shelton. And you got down here, you got Jake Kierhan, 59, only four snaps. Tevin Jenkins, 54.2. And he wants an extension? I'm, I'm seriously in doubt on whether Tevin Jenkins should get an extension anymore. He's been one of our best players all year. This was by far his worst game. By far. Darnell Wright, 52.4. That is not 10th overall pick quality. That is not going to cut the mustard. Larry Bourne, 32.4. It's just absolute trash. Just anyway, So it wasn't just pass blocking. We're run blocking too. Terrible. Absolutely terrible. Uh, this is such a frustrating game for me, guys. We, 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 we needed better than this out of this team. All right. Defensive studs of the game. 
Terrell Smith, only nine total plays. Good thing he got an opportunity with Tyreek. But Tyreek didn't play bad either. In fact, I'll get to it on the next little part with coverage grades. The three of them, we had three pass breakups, and they were the only ones that had them. Those two combined had the three pass breakups. No interception. When's the last time we had an interception? Where is this crucible? Where where are we picking guys off? Where is this happening? It's not happening. Uh, man, when Dominic Robinson at a 71.1 is one of your best defensive grades on 22 total plays, and he didn't do anything in the game, that's pretty sad. Jacob Martin actually had a decent game for his first game back. He should have got more snaps. He really should have. He should have got a lot more snaps. Jervon Dexter didn't have a bad game. Uh, these are, again, all the guys around 65 and above. So this isn't everyone, but these are the guys with the best game for the Bears. Uh, we move on to, I hope you guys enjoy seeing some of the grades from this. It doesn't tell the whole picture. I've said that, but it does give a little peek of where things are. Here's the pass rush grades. Uh, in fact, I'm just going to skip forward. Just look at that real quick. And this includes all positions, but we're looking more at the defensive ends and the and the tackles on this. Zach Pickens, a decent, decent game. Chris Williams, a decent game. <laughs> Really one play for Chris Williams. Other than that, he didn't do anything. Uh, Demarcus Walker, very average in this game. Jervon Dexter, extremely last year. Uh, not bad, but not good. Austin Booker, non-existent. Darrell Taylor, nothing. Nothing happening with Darrell Taylor in this game. So here is the pressure from this game. So this is what I'll show you guys. Let me just move me. Let's go up here. Boop. Boop, I use boop a lot. Jacob Martin, 73.5 pass rush grade. In in five pass rush opportunities, he had two pressures, one hurry and one sack. So very good game for him. They need to obviously utilize him more, especially with Montez Sweat out. Why didn't we use him more? I don't know. Uh, they, they like to use Dominic Robinson for some reason. Um, and Dominic Robinson did nothing. He Nothing, absolutely nothing. So... Uh, they gave him a decent grade, so I guess he contained well, but uh, didn't look good. Um, Kevin Byard had a blitzing snap, blitzing sack there. His <laughs> PRP is 150, which is just not realistic when you're comparing him to linemen. Um, Darrell Taylor. When you see a lot of these 0, zero grades here, guys, uh, Austin Booker, Darrell Taylor, Andrew Billings. Now, obviously, he was hurt and he came out. Uh Jervon Dexter, that's very low for him. 2.9 and 5.9. Those are extremely low. Demarcus Walker, 6.6. That's not the worst, but it's not a good game either. Dominic Robinson, zero pressure, but one win. Um, the only one that looks decent is Jacob Martin. <laughs> so Zach Pickens is actually decent too. I mean, he had a, seven snaps, one pressure. There's not a lot of good to say about this game overall. We got three sacks on the game, but most of them were, you know, uh, off. one was off Kevin Byard, and I don't, I don't have a lot of good. To, just take this for what it's worth because it wasn't great. Here's our coverage grades. Here's what I'm talking about with the pass breakups. Uh, you look right here. One pass breakup by Terrell Smith in the five snaps he was in. Two by Tyreek Stevenson, 17 snaps he was in. This is the one positive of the game. Tyreek Stevenson obviously took this seriously, played really well. Uh, not his best game ever. 70.4 NFL pass rating against grade is, is pretty solid. 56.3 is even better. So Terrell Smith is eager to make his place on this team. He really wants uh, to prove himself, and he's, he's quality backup. Uh, he probably should get some reps somewhere. The, the disturbing thing here at the bottom, Jalen Johnson, his his bad grade, um, two out of three receptions, which is not normal for him. 84 NFL pass rating against. It's not terrible, but it's not normal for him. And then even worse was his tackling. I don't have that right here, but his tackling was absolutely – he had one good tackle the entire game in the first half. Other than that, he was missing tackles. He looked piss poor. I mean, there's no other way to say it. TJ Edwards and Tremaine Edmonds continue to be a liability on this team at linebacker for coverage. So, Matt Eberflus is obviously not the miracle worker. He's not perfect. He's not. He's not everything when it comes to defense. Uh, I've I've really enjoyed him over the last year and keeping teams under twenty points. But if we can't get the offense rolling, it doesn't matter. Uh, but anyways, here's all the grades. Really, Reddy Stewart had a, a really good uh, opportunity when he came in too, and I I praised him a lot as an undrafted free agent. I really like him as well. And Elijah Hicks filling in at free safety again. I think he he really is doing a good job. I do. Uh, very poor last year. He did allow the one target to be a reception, but it's, he's he's tracking guys well. When you watch him on the field, Elijah Hicks looks good. He really does. He looks good. So again, these PFF grades don't tell the entire picture. Uh, but they do tell a big picture of it. 
All right, here's our defensive duds, and this is a huge list. This is way bigger than normal. Uh, TJ Edwards, Jalen Johnson, ja Zach Pickens, Austin Booker, Tremaine Edmonds, Andrew Billings, Jack Sanborn, Chris Williams, Darrell Taylor, Noah Smith. When you got that Sewell, I'm sorry, Noah Smool, Sewell. When you got that many guys as your on your duds list, it's not good. It's it's bad. So we're gonna move on from that. Here is the last thing we're gonna do. I wanna I wanna end this video. To be honest, this is <laughs> this is actually killing me. Uh, last thing is is I do this every week for Caleb and his progression, how he's coming along. Um, this is week six. Uh, good progression here in the middle. Um, really a, a really good grade week six. That's the last good week he had. Week seven was when the trains fell off the cart, looked bad again. And then week eight, here's week eight, and it doesn't look good. Uh, the deep ball for him, one for four here. No interceptions, so he's not hey, – there was, there was a couple that could have been intercepted in this game, but – He's not throwing the ball. He, he's being, he's just inaccurate. Uh, but he's being inaccurate to favor not throwing the ball away, which is good. But it's almost like he's coached that too hard. And he's uh, 1 for 4, 0 for 1, 0 for 5, 2 for 2 in the middle, 2 for 4 here. He's great here, but maybe I guess we have to put the training wheels on him and make him a baby like we everyone talked about with Justin Fields last year. Maybe that's where we are with this team. I don't know. Uh, I, he's definitely not any more special than any other rookie in this class right now, and he's not setting himself apart. Like he said, great teams are led by the by the by the players, and that's not happening right now. He's not leading this team. If you want to be a superstar, then you're gonna have to start showing it. So. Those are the grades. That's my analysis. Guys, I'm not happy with anything on this team right now. I'm fine right now if they fire everyone, including Ryan Poles. I'm I'm good. Promote Ian Cunningham. Uh, make Eric Washington the interim head coach. Bring in another offensive mind. You can't get rid of Shane Waldron on year one of a rookie, but you got to bring in outside help somehow to, to help fix it. you got to bring in some kind of outside help, maybe an assistant head coach, to go along with Eric Washington to advise with Shane Walt. There's got to be a change. There's got to be someone who can see it better. Because this is bad. It's it's bad right now. I wish I was more upbeat and happy for you guys right now. I wish I had a better song to sing. I don't. This is bad. It's piss poor. And I don't like being a part of it right now. I'm going to be here. I'm going to keep reporting on the Bears. I'm going to keep giving you my insights. I'm going to keep saying, ah, I was right. Right now, that's what I'm saying. I was right. I wish I wasn't because I wanted this team to be 7-1 and one right now, at least 6-2. and two. That's what I wanted for us, but we're not. We're 4-4, four and four, which at the end of the day is not the worst thing in the world. But with the way the momentum has shifted, with the attitude of this team, with the culture, with the blah, 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 it doesn't feel good. It doesn't feel good right now. So let me know your guys' thoughts in the comment. Those are the PFF grades for this week. We'll have more coming out this week. Appreciate all you guys. If you haven't hit the like button, please do so. If you haven't subscribed, please do so. Even through the down times, we're going to bear down on this channel. And I hope, I hope, I hope, I hope things shift soon. We turn it around. We get things rolling. And this team is on the winning ways again. But it's going to be tough with this schedule coming up. It is going to be tough. With that, hang in there, guys. Bear down.